So Eric Crawford. Okay, so I'm going to talk about something a little bit different than business. Um, I'm going to talk about our kids and our responsibility as not only parents, but as just gosh darn lovers of our kids and how much we appreciate it. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, this is the inside of your brain. These are your synapses. And when we start, there aren't any of these. And as we grow, these little synapses start to form. This web starts to build as we learn, as we learn how to walk, as we learn how to talk, as we learn how to public speak. All of these type of things. And what happens is as this happens, these things need to grow. This web needs to grow. And it's our responsibility as parents to build that in our kids. And out of everything in my life, it sounds kind of weird, but this is one of my scariest things. My kids living in my basement when they're 25 years old. So I've done tons of research on it. I'm incredibly blessed. My wife and I have a 12-year-old, 9-year-old twins, and they are what gets me out of bed every morning. They are what makes me want to go to work. They are the ones that make me want to close another job. They are the ones that want to build everything in my life. And so I have this huge responsibility to them. And what I've realized is that to be a phenomenal parent, you have to think differently. Similar to Joel talking about business. For ultimate success, you have to operate differently. And what I want to talk about today are three main areas. Teaching independence, teaching critical thinking, and welcoming failure. Okay? So we all come into this world cold, needy, and dumb. This is me at five days old with my mom and my older brother. Um, humans are a rare species in that when we're born, we can't do anything. We can do zero. We can't find food. We can't move. We can't even hold up our own heads. So we need care and love and guidance to be able to survive. And one of the most intriguing parts I've found is that humans have the longest development cycle of any animal. And there's all kinds of arguments as to why. Um, but I truly believe that it's because we as parents have a responsibility to be a parent. First and foremost, we have a responsibility to raise them and teach them and walk them through all kinds of experiences as their parent, not as their friend. There's a time to be a friend, but I believe more importantly there's a time to be a parent. So when we go through this, first point of independence. So this is my daughter, Lexi. And I want to ask you, are you encouraging growth or protecting from risk? Maybe Child Protective Services and go, would look at this and go, you're letting your daughter up like that and do that. So this is something my wife and I looked at when we walked out, and this is my daughter, and she's up, and she's trying to see how big of a tower she can build. It. Okay. She's teetering on her tiptoes. She's kind of hopefully not going to fall. My wife's freaking out because she goes, well, when that falls, it's going to dent the sheetrock and maybe dent the hardwoods. I said, well, hon, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? What is the absolute worst thing? She falls and breaks an arm. You know what? I'll take a broken arm. Grade four, I'll take her experiencing drugs and trying to discover those things when she's 15 or 20. Okay? So, next one. Are us as parents here to challenge or remove difficulty? I truly believe that we are here to challenge. That we are here to challenge our kids. That difficulty is part of growth that these challenges that we fight are what make us better. They enable those synapses to join, and they enable our brains to grow. Removing difficulty is not our job as parents. That's not why we're here. And last one in regard to independence. So is a mother bird helping or hurting her baby by cracking the shell? For those that haven't heard this, it's incredibly intriguing. So what happens is if a baby bird's shell is broken prematurely by an external force, the mom breaks it, it gets broken in the nest. Something happens and that shell gets broken before the baby, or before the baby bird breaks it. That bird will have its innate reaction and to walk to the edge of the nest, spread its wings and fly. But it won't fly, it'll actually drop to the ground and die. And what scientists have found is that that sheer difficulty of a baby bird trying to break out of its own shell, of pushing and cracking and driving actually enables it to grow and develop its muscles and develop its bones and learn how to move. So that then when it walks to the edge of the nest, 
it can actually take that first step and fly. So although on the surface it seems like that baby, that mother may be adding difficulty to her children, to her baby birds, we've actually found that's something very different. So critical thinking, not to be confused with regular thinking. Okay. Do you answer the question or help them discover? About a month ago, my 12-year-old, we're in the kitchen. He goes, Dad, where's the milk? I'm like, really, Jack? Really? So as a 12-year-old, he does one of these. <sighs> Fine. And walks over to the fridge and opens up the fridge and goes, Dad, we don't have any milk. I said, well, are you sure? He goes, yeah, I don't see any milk. I said, well, are you sure? Have you looked throughout the fridge? Dad, it's not in here. Well, where else could you maybe look? I don't know. So then he pulls out the orange juice and pulls out the apple juice and pulls out the chocolate and all this other stuff and finds it. So are we helping them discover or are we just answering the question? What is our responsibility as parents? Okay. Do we tell them what to do or do we define expectations? In our house, when it's time to get ready in the morning, there is no, Lexi, go get your socks on. Henry, why aren't you ready yet? Jack, we told you to comb your hair. That's not what happens. In our house, right at our door, we have our expectations. And there's expectations for morning, and there's expectations for bedtime. And it says, in the morning, they know they need to be ready to walk out the door at 8.05 to catch the bus. So it says, teeth brushed, hair combed, showers, breakfast, lunches made, etc. right down the list. So now what we're doing is we're defining the expectations. We're letting them figure it out. We're letting them figure out, okay, if I need to be out the door at 8.05, when do I need to be ready? Okay. Do you tell them why or help them discover root cause? So if your child comes to you with a toy and says it doesn't work, do you go, okay, thanks, and take it over and fix it and give it back to them? Or do you go, wow, that's really intriguing. Why doesn't it work? And if they're like most kids, they'll then complain and they'll say, well, why don't you just fix it and on and on and on. But helping them discover, helping them figure it out. Are these things hard? Absolutely. Is it really tough when you're overworked and you're tired and you want to go to bed and you have 4,000 different things going on, you're trying to figure out how to pay the bills and all these other things, and you need to take an extra 20 minutes to teach them? Absolutely, it's hard. It's really hard. But I believe that as parents, we have that responsibility. That's our job. First and foremost, I'm a father. Okay? So welcoming failure, point number three. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is part of success. I guarantee Joel can give us a thousand times, or he, stories of a thousand times where he's failed, and far fewer of where he's succeeded. Because this failure is what's so critical. So this guy. Theodore decided he wanted to write a book, so he took it to a publisher. He said, hey, I have this book. Will you print it? And the publisher said, no. So he went to another one, and they said, no. He went to another, and this kept going. So I'm pretty sure Theodore was pretty confident in being able to go through failure. So this happened 27 times. 28th publisher, they said, nah, looks intriguing. We'll give it a try. So they went and printed it, and it was successful. So he wrote another one. They printed that. Turns out he's now sold over 600 million copies of his books. And we don't know him by Theodore. We know him by Dr. Seuss. Really, really incredible. So is the act of trying failure or discovery? Okay. Do you let them fail as you did on your road to success? Us as parents have that responsibility. We need to let them fail. Like I said earlier, I will gladly take a failure in my nine-year-old before I take a failure when they're 25, because most likely the failure when they're nine is going to be much, much less severe. Okay? I would gladly welcome a failure of them forgetting their binder and letting them experience that failure and going to school without their binder than them walking into an executive meeting and forgetting their presentation when they're 25 years old. So last one, why are over 80% of all millionaires first generation? Over 80% are first generation. Absolutely incredible to me. What they found when looking at it is that those first generation individuals, they welcome failure. They welcome risk. They want to go. They want to fight. Okay. 
So I challenge you guys today, if you're ambitious, you can take on both of them, but at least one of them. Find an opportunity where you can expose your child to failure. And I'm not saying, obviously, something threatening, but something where that they will fail. You know they will fail. And when they do, be right there to pick them up and be right there to talk about it. Be right there to go, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Gosh, you sucked at a guitar. But now you know. You had no idea until you tried. Encourage failure. We actually do it at our dinner table at least once a week. We sit down and we go around the table and ask my kids, I say, tell me something you failed at. Awesome, that's an awesome failure. Why'd you fail? What happened? Let's talk about it and encourage it. Because the more failures we can get through, the sooner we can get to those successes. Okay? Or provide your child a single problem that you know they can solve and let them fight through it. And some may disagree with me here, but I say even to the point where they're crying if needed. No different than business coaches, life coaches, and sports coaches. The whole intent of a coach is to help you grow, help you grow beyond where you're capable. I thought it was incredibly intriguing. I was talking to my dad moons ago, and he said, you know, I remember when I was in the Marines going through boot camp during Vietnam. They would give us an order, and they'd say, you guys need to go and summit that mountain. And they said, you, if you don't make it, you better be dead, or we will make you that way. And he said, you know, that was amazing how much more we could accomplish when that was the alternative. And so that's what we want to, these situations, looking at where our kids can really grow. Okay? So this is my son, Jack. And it's kind of hard to see right there. So this is a little village out in bush, out in the middle of nowhere of northern Alaska. And him and I were fortunate enough to go on a trip there. And he wanted to go and explore. Our oldest son, Jack, loves being alone. He wishes he was an only child. He has no use for his twins. He just wants to be alone. So we're up there. He goes, Dad, I want to go walking. I said, OK, go ahead. And I let him go. And he was gone for over two hours. I could see him. He was walking up and down along here. He didn't have a phone, didn't have a tablet, didn't have any technology, didn't have anything except for his sel himself, a pair of jeans, and a t-shirt. He just explored. And he came back, Dad, I found this, and I found this, and look at this. He walked around on a piece of dirt with sticks on it for over two hours. And he then talked about how awesome it was for over a half an hour. Okay. So independence comes from charting our own path, including finding potholes, right? We have to explore. So I empower your children to think logically, right? And critically, analyze everything around us. Look at the environment that you're in and go, is this really where I want to be? And lastly, embrace failure. As I say, growth comes from the ashes of failure rather than the comfort of success. All right. Thank you guys so much.